Welcome everyone to another observability clinic, Dynatrace Terraform. Uh, today I've invited Adrian. Hi Adrian, welcome to the show. Hi Andy. Hey Adrian, thank you so much for doing this. Um, we have talked a lot about infrastructure as code. We talk about everything as code. And when it comes to Dynatrace configuration, there are multiple options. You can either do it through the API. We have talked about Monaco in the past. That's our tool that we provided. But Terraform is obviously a big topic because it is um, a kind of the leading infrastructure as code tool. And I'm not an expert in it, but I know you are working with it on a day-to-day -day basis at Kitopi. That's why I'm really happy that you are on the show today. Adrian, could you quickly tell the audience who you are and what you do? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I'm not an expert. So whatever is going to be said today, <laughs> it's going to be, a, let's say, my hands-on knowledge and some let's say, broader experience. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I will try to mark some points when, you know, this is a good practice or you, you should do it the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but I've been using Terraform provider for some time already, like I would say a year or something. And currently I'm a SRE and QA director in uh, in uh, Kitopi, big word. I'm just, uh, you know, a team lead, technical team lead for, uh, for a team of, oh God, I don't know, 15 or 16. Uh, great people right now. Um, yeah, one of my tasks on a daily basis is to improve our observability via uh, using, implementing, and preaching Dynatrace uh, in our teams. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, ah, maybe worth noting, uh, I've been working in IT for, I think, almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I have mostly QA background, uh, but the SRE uh, domain is not so new to me as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, Adrian, having said this, I know you have a lot of stuff prepared. Uh, let's jump right into it. What do you have prepared for us? Yeah, sure. I would like us to um, divide this session into two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be just a short introduction to what exactly is a Dynatrace Terraform provider. So just a note here, it's not going to be a, an introduction to Ter Terraform as it is, uh, as a tool. Um, I will quickly um, just maybe mention some, you know, good sites or the key points about Terraform provider, but it's going to be around, focused around using the Terraform provider uh, pre-provided officially by Dynatrace. Um, and, you know, what is the idea behind it or how you can put your configuration as a code? And then maybe the second and maybe more important part is going to be how we actually can do it practically. So I will show you some demo that will hopefully get you you know let you kick start with your own uh, usage of this provider perfect and as we said right i will try to play the role of the audience so i will probably have a <laughs> lot of questions because i want to learn from you i um, hope so <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh yeah but take take it away and if you have a moment where you think you know you can bring me in just do it uh, but yeah it's awesome yeah, uh, Andy, Andy has some ca handicap because he already uh, seen some uh, some of my presentation about this <laughs> earlier. But uh, let's play the role that you are, you know, a, a newbie that knows about Terraform. Exactly. Uh, so ask the question, be the, you know, be the bad guy here. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, so what's what exactly is Dynatrace Terraform provider? So as I said, Terraform is a maybe a leading industry tool for infrastructure as a code. So this is like, let's say a corporate grade or maybe industry grade uh, tool that has been um, in IT scene for over eight, eight years, I think right now. Mm -hmm. And it was created by HashiCorp. And right now all the big players have their own providers. And what I mean by provider is a, you know, a library that allows you to use the, the power of uh, Terraform its syntax, its uh, operators, variables, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to create your own configuration in your own system, or let's say SaaS. Mm -hmm. For example, AWS, Google uh, Cloud, and also Dynatrace have their own providers. So in order to make your own provider officially, you need to be, let's say, certified. So official providers uh, in Terraform are not some random pieces of code put by anyone, but in case of, for example, Dynatrace Terraform provider, this is the official package uh, that the guys in Dyna, uh, Dynatrace, uh, we're going to mention them later, but um, Reinhardt and Kodai at the moment, plus some people in open source community, they are working on that for you to be able to use, you know, your Dynatrace configuration. So 
provides uh, first of all the provider gives you access or lets you uh, create resources what can be a resource it can be a key request it can be a dashboard it can be uh, you know a calculated metric or maybe slo etc cetera, etc cetera. so entities so lets you cr create uh, entities and also gives you access to so-called data sources so data sources would be something like let's say read only so maybe we don't we don't create a service because you know service is detected by uh, detected by the net trace but lets you access the object and lets you access some of its features for example if you need an id uh, of a service you you can pull it using the define it by the, the data source and pull it um, by using the property id i will show that in a moment so this is let's say a, a very a very very big library for creating most of the resources and uh, some of the data sources that you might be uh, needing to use during your configuration and a note here you will not find yet all the configuration that is available via api uh, or probably even monaco uh, but i know that the, the guys who are working hard to uh, get uh, all of these settings all of the configurations as resources as soon as possible mm -hmm. uh, where you can find the provider so the provider in terraform registry you can find it under this address so there you can also find some documentation on how to use it uh, and the latest version as as of now is zero uh, sorry 1.16 mm -hmm. uh, released i think a few days ago and if you want to participate or you know contribute to the open source community you can also take a look at the GitHub source code, which is uh, which is here, mm -hmm. and we will, you know, we will mention that again at the end of the cleaning, I guess, how you can really contribute. But if you want to take a look at the source code, um, that's the link you want to follow. And Adrian, I will also make sure to add the links to the description, the summary of uh, this clinic. So if you are watching this on YouTube or on Dynatrace University, uh, you will probably see the links in the bottom of the description that's perfect um i think some uh, some of you might already use monaco or maybe ha you have heard that i think andy you were discussing monaco previously right mm -hmm. we have, yeah. Uh, yeah and so monaco as i understand it i only had a, a short journey uh with monaco a quick you know a very short time spent with that tool because we were already able to switch to a uh, telephone provider but this is these are two let's say similar ideas behind those tools however monaco is um, built only for dynatrace mm -hmm. and at the same time optimized for this use case so this is let's say a custom tool developed and provided by dynatrace team it has its own cli it is supported officially by Dynatra by dynatrace and also it has some ability to um parameterize your resources sorry i'm using the terraform language but your components via environment variable environment variables and if you don't have any tool in place and you want something let's say easy out of the box without the need to learn the whole you know the whole tool knowledge and you also want to get the official support from dynatrace that would be probably the the way to go at the same time we have terraform which is industry standard so, you know, if you are planning on implementing a bigger IAC in your uh, organization, maybe you have some AWS, maybe some other cloud provider, um, maybe you you have some other um, systems that are that already have Terraform providers um, and you want something that is, you know, proven, you know, by many, um, many organizations around the world. At the same time, it has a lot of syntax you know helpers you can define templates variables loops uh you can you know define your own modules mm -hmm. so this is more complex thing i would say yeah uh but at the same time this is a standard as i said so if you if you don't have of if you don't have a tool in place and you have you and you want something that is you know widely used more common it's an industry standard as i said or maybe you have your existing terraform uh, infrastructure but without the official dynatrace support what what i mean by that that you know you are not guaranteed to get the support but i know that the community and also even if you go and ask on on chat 
they're going to try to help you. So it, <laughs> that doesn't mean that you have no support. Mm-hmm. Um, then maybe Terraform is the way to go. So, you know, these are two, um, not m- mutually exclusive, but uh, two tools that you can use in, in two different uh, use cases. Mm-hmm. In our case, uh, we are using Terraform for most of or as much as of our infrastructure as we can. Uh, so this was an easy choice, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's a um, great, that's a great overview, uh, Adrian, of what you provide here. And I can just echo what you said and also what I just learned from you. Basically, you say, if you have nothing in place uh, and you really just need this for a Dynatrace configuration, then Monaco would be a good place to start. If you already have Terraform in your organization or if you plan to use everything as code for more than just monitoring, then Terraform uh, might be a better choice. Right? If, yeah, if I, wish, I wish they, they had... Terraform providers for haircuts because I, <laughs> I see my hair and it needs some uh, reform. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, so few examples, the, the similar examples. I'm gonna try to. I, I will try uh, to show you in the demo. But anyway, Andy, tell me if everything mm-hmm. makes sense to you. So probably you know Andy how to create a calculated metric, right? Mm-hmm. You've been presenting this use case for uh, SLO definitions many many times. Um, and this is actually a very great, um, a great example on how you can think about the entity you already know in terms of Terraform provider or is resource. So here's a very simple thing. This is going to be some just request count for all the requests that have been processed or re- responded to within 100 milliseconds, right? Mm-hmm. So this is just a request count for all the requests processed under uh, under or equal to uh, 100 milliseconds. So this is going to be just some count, right? And using this, we can create a, um, a calculated metric, right? So probably most of our audience knows what the calculated metric is. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be just, you know, automatically created custom, let's say custom calculated metric with your own key. Um, and it's going to be pos- populated as the service leaves or response. So additionally to the metric metrics you get with uh, with any service, any method, you're going to have uh, this one calculated for this particular uh, method. And if we translate this into a resource, uh, of course, it's a lot of code, you know, <laughs> that can that can look a bit intimidating at the beginning, but let's focus on, you know, a broad picture. So everything that you can see here, except for the purple square or rectangle rather. Um, first of all, you can see that there is a resource. So this is a resource is a keyword in Terraform, right? Then we have the kind of resource that we are creating. The kind of resource is provided by a Dynatrace Terraform provider. So this is something that, you know, this is predefined and you should use it if you want to define a, a calculated metric. So in this case, it's gonna be Dynatrace calculated service metric. And then there goes your own key or your own name for this resource. In, in this case, of course, Excuse me, the <laughs> silly examples. I'm gonna make many shortcuts here. Not everything will be perfect, but fast responses count mm-hmm. uh, is gonna be the name of my resource, right? Mm-hmm. And then we define some you know, properties of this uh, re- particular resource. So we, we can define the name of our calculated metric. So maybe this name is a bit better, fast responses for order service created order. So there's, there's some controller, there's some method, and we are creating a calculated metric for that. Is it enabled? Yes, it is. So we have enabled true. Then we have the entity ID, the entity to which um, the calculated service uh, metric applies. And this is basically the service ID of this um, of the service that we are creating calculated metric for. Then we provide a key, same thing as you provide in the UI. Mm-hmm. And then we provide the unit, it's gonna be a count. So we will count, you know, count some uh, um, values. And we have the metric definition, request count. Uh, those two tells us how, how the metric should be aggregated. And then within this, you know, purple, uh, purple haze, <laughs> purple block, uh, we have what we call conditions. So conditions, you can think about, about it as filters in this case. So remember, each resource can have different fields. Um, so it's not like every resource has conditions. No, this particular resource, if you want to define some filters as you did in the 
UI part here, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, so if you want to define this, those filters, you define them using conditions. So then um, the first condition tells you, okay, the request name equals uh, create to cre create order. So this is going to be my method. And then another condition, which will be like the response time should be lower than or equal to 100 milliseconds. So, you know, it might be intimidating at first, but I think all of you understand that this is just translating what we see in the UI mm -hmm. and ultimately in the API. So you can think about uh, a Terraform provider as a, you know, another layer of abstraction of our API. So underneath the hood, uh, Terraform provider, I don't know if you know that, Andy, but Terraform provider is actually uh, exercising the, uh, the API of awesome. configuration API of uh, Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. So that's actually, you know, a high level layer of abstraction to what you already have in, in, in the Dynatrace, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just as a new UI. Here we have a code, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a nice codification. Basically, that's really what it is, right? Because what you're showing me is uh, I'm I, I was uh, brought up as a developer, so in this case, I'm creating an object fast response count from the class Dynatrace calculated service metric, and I define for that object a couple of properties like the name, the metric key, and the conditions, and they will all be translated to Dynatrace configuration. But I can write it in code. In this case, a Terraform. Uh, Terraform code, and then when I use Terraform, this just will make sure that Dynatrace really has, let's say in this case, this particular calculated service metric specified, and that's what I like about it. it's codification yeah. of configuration. Yes, exactly. Like the you can think about the resource as a object, like let's say the dynamically created object. You can create those calculated services metrics as many as you want with different mm -hmm. properties. So this is like instances, okay. Mm -hmm. The, this particular object type or the class you can think. Um, I hope no one from Terraform is listening to us and they will not kill us. <laughs> but this is a useful, uh, useful, you know, similarity for those who know already code. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a, you know, a object type which requires you to uh, to give some properties. Like for example, the name will be required, but if you don't provide enabled flag, maybe it's going to be by default true or false. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I think true. Mm -hmm. You need to provide entity ID. You don't have to provide conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then it gets uh, transformed in the first, in the first, uh, in the first phase. This is what Terraform gives you. It translates those, you know, high-level uh, code uh, files, text files, mm -hmm. into its own objects. Then it uses the provider to, you know, perform action. See, do I have this resource? If I have, maybe I want to create. If I, uh, sorry, if I don't have, I, maybe I want to create. If I already have it, maybe something has changed. So maybe I need to modify, you know, yeah. or maybe the user wants me to destroy this uh, resource. And that's what uh, Terraform actually gives us. It, uh, you know, it takes those, you know, text files, it checks its so-called state mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, tells us, okay, so here's the plan. You have, you know, defined five resources, but you only have three. So we, we need to create two and maybe modify one. And then using one simple command, you can do it. If you want one simple command, then you can destroy it. You know, I'm gonna show it in a, in a moment in the demo. I, I think it's not gonna be so, uh, so difficult to get it. Mm -hmm. Another thing just, you know, just to show you the, uh, how we can possibly parameterize those uh, terraforming uh, resources and how to use data sources. Another very common uh, thing that all of us do, marking uh, particular uh, particular methods or service uh, service methods endpoints as key requests, right? You go to UI, mark as key request, uh, and that's it. But what if we don't want to, you know, we, we have 100 key requests to mark, right? 200. Maybe we have, uh, you know, three environments mm -hmm. and we need to do it everywhere manually. Or maybe, most likely, um, you don't want to give access to this to everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe no one should modify it manually on production, right? And then, you know, then there's some kind of limitation, but using Terraform provider, you can define just, you know, one resource or define some loop that is gonna uh, do it uh, for all the services or the methods you want. And maybe as I will show you later, maybe you can just define one template file and then copy it or link it to all the environments and instantly apply to all the other environments. So in this case, you're gonna see that we have um, something um, introduced rather 
rather freshy, I think few a few months ago. So marking as key requests. So we have our service and method. So in order to uh, define key requests for some particular service, it's very simple resource. Um, it's Dynatrace key requests. Of course, another, uh, as before, I defined some custom name ordering service uh, key request. Again, don't follow my convention. It's not the best here. Um, and then we have two things, service, service ID. So this is a thing that was a bit painful at the beginning. And that's why um, Reinhardt uh, helped us with introducing data source because you need to provide a service ID, right? You don't always know the service ID and you don't always want to hard code the service ID, right? Mm -hmm. It might change, it might change. It might be different on different environments. It's mm -hmm. not guaranteed. So the hard coding is not the perfect thing, but there is a solution to that. And also you provide names, a list of names for your methods and you know, that's it. So here you have the hard coded service, which is a, a bit, you know, not perfect solution. That's why um, Dynatrace team uh, came up with, uh, with an idea to, to give us data, uh, the uh, data source and data source Dynatrace service can uh, let you um, find a proper service by, for example, name and tax. So this is going to be, you know, uh, the service I want to, um, I want to find with particular tags. So you, you can, you know, find this exactly service that you are interested in. And instead of hard coding, we are using reference to this, let's say other object, right? This is data, uh, data sources, a read only object. So you can use it, of course, as data Dynatrace service, you see the type order service, uh, as a name and then ID. So this is going to be the property ID of this particular you know, data object, let's say. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we are, you know, first finding the interesting object using data source, and then we are applying this or using referencing this ID uh, in another resource. In this case, it's fully parameterized. So if you run it on another, um, on another environment where you have the same uh, service with the same tags, which I think is a good practice, right? If yeah. you have the same system, then you're going to have the same tags, you're going to have the same um, name, but not necessarily the same ID, right? Mm -hmm. I like it. This is, this is really powerful. And I think just folks, right, in Dynatrace, as you mentioned earlier, all of our monitored entities, whether it's a host, a process, a service, an application, they all have unique IDs. And these unique IDs change from environment to environment. So if I have a service called order service in my Dynatrace environment, it's a different ID than yours. But mm. what you're showing here, you are showing how you can declaratively as code define configuration for Dynatrace objects, not identified by the unique ID, but by some metadata, like a name, like text. And this is what I like a lot about this, because you basically say, this is an object, or this is a data, uh, this is, it's called data here, but you can detect my order service by its name and also by the tag team Batman. And then I want to create a Dynatrace key request on top of this particular object that I'm now defining uh, by a name and tag instead of by unique ID that always changes. So I think that's really nice. Yeah, exactly. That's so similar. another, you see that the, this is like very similar to programming, right? To good yeah. practices in programming. You don't hard code, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a particular, you know, row number mm -hmm. 655 in database, you're gonna, you know, provide some query that is able to fetch the interesting uh, exactly. ID, which can always change, right? This is mm -hmm. quite dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing to remember is that this is executed whenever the Terraform plan or apply is run. So if you're, um, you know, if you want to do it on another environment, you're gonna have to plan and apply. I'm gonna show you what plan and apply means in a second. Mm -hmm. But if you also, if you, for whatever reason, the name of the service has changed and the ID changed, you know, in your current environment, you're gonna have to uh, run the plan again. But this is, you know, quite fast. Uh, mm -hmm. This doesn't require much effort. And this is still easier than going, you know, to all the places where you need to click it and, and do it manually. So I hope that's, that's, uh, you know, quite simple. And I will show you how this works in a second, but just to sum up, why, why would we like to use the provider? First of all, if you don't want to edit things manually, or you don't, you have like, in our case, many, many people that work in Dynatrace, they want their own dashboards, you know, their own, want their own, you know, I need a key request, I need an SLO, uh, you know, I have 
two guys besides me in the SRE team. So I'm not, not going to block them. You know, you cannot edit in production. I will do it whenever I have time. Mm -hmm. No, you put it in the code. Uh, you put it in test environment. Uh, maybe you create it in test environment, put it into code, deploy on test and propagate to uh, stage and prod right away from Terraform, right? So this is safe. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have more and, you know, more environments, or maybe you want to pro uh, prepare for a disaster recovery, you know, of course, we know that nothing will ever happen to Dynatrace servers, but in case it does, <laughs> we have it in our code, right? Dynatrace will guarantee you that, okay, their servers are going to run again, but maybe your configuration needs to be recreated or some part of it, you know, things happen, right? Mm -hmm. um, then you have it in the code. You just run the uh, apply again, Terraform is going to check the state and create what, whatever is missing, right? Then, as I said, Terraform has many useful features. You can use variables, you can use loops, you can define your own modules, um, as in the last part. So it's it's more like a programming language mm -hmm. than just, you know, simple YAML reader, which is designed uh, to create something. It has many features that are provided, not, not even by Terraform provider, but Terraform as a tool itself. So if you, for example, hire someone from another company, uh, you have a new guy in the team, he already knows Terraform. Okay, it's going to be easy for him to understand what's going on because he, know that, you know, he knows the syntax, he knows the, the tool itself. He just has to, he or she, uh, they have to learn, uh, the, you know, just the resources that Dynatrace provider gives you. I think I want to I want to quickly add uh, two practical use cases. What I also see, a we have a lot of users that consider moving from, let's say, Dynatrace managed environment to Dynatrace SaaS, and if you have already codified your Dynatrace configuration, let's say with Terraform, then you can just easily apply that configuration from your managed environment to SaaS. Another one that I see a lot as you're onboarding more and more teams. Right. With Dynatrace, let's say you have more development teams that are building new apps, you can use this as templating. Right, You can basically give them a template for their app. And then the only thing they have to do is basically take their Terraform code, add it to their source code, customize it so that they have their app name and put their tags on it. But then they automatically get the SLOs, the dashboards, the learning profiles, everything you just said. I think for so for templating, it's really great. And also for moving, let's say, from managed to SaaS, for instance. Yeah. Exactly, I agree. And also, for example, in our case, we have, let's say, 12 or 13 development teams, which are, you know, each team has code name, mm -hmm. Alpha, Bravo, yeah. whatever. And then you want to create some mapping, uh, okay, for auto-tagging. These databases belong to Bravo, right? This, um, you know, this uh, service is marked by this Kubernetes tag, they belong to Bravo, right? So we are creating management uh, zones like this, that we are, you know, just uh, filtering entities by tags, mm -hmm. team team names. And in, if you want to do it manually, or even if you want to do it like without using loop functions or any mapping functions, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a huge pile of, of files. Yeah. Uh, but if you are able to do some mapping, okay, so here, here is the key Bravo, and these are the names of databases. Or here is the, you know, here is the name of the front-end application, or again, mm -hmm. name of the team, names of the front-end application. Do it in a loop, create the tags. It mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And the configuration, when you, uh, you know, when you look at it, the configuration of management zone and auto-tagging after applying, it's quite, you know, scary. There's a lot of things. But if you look at, uh, at it in the code, it's, you know, it's few maps or few lists, one loop, uh, one module, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it scales, right? It scales, yeah. yeah. All right, let's see it live. Uh, now the demo is coming next. Oh man, that, that now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I, my idea for the demo today is to show you a few simple, you know, configurations that we can do in a code. Um, so maybe we will start off by defining a Lambda function in AWS to have something to, to report to Dynatrace. And this is also done, I also did it by Terraform, just to show you how you basically can use variables in a, in a code. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna try and define an, a simple SLO for this Lambda function. It's gonna be just for, you know, for error rate, the, mm -hmm. the same simple SLO that, that you can always show or you always show. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But this is good enough to show how you can move this configuration to Terraform. And then maybe we can create a simple dashboard using this SLO. And the um, important part I would like to uh, try to demo is how you can how easy you can move the same configuration to another environment. Mm -hmm. So in fact, I have two environments prepared. Uh, so I will be defining first things on one environment and then we can see how quickly we can move to another environment and hopefully uh, if the demo effect is not going to be too hard on us, um, it's going to work. So, yeah, so first let's go to my AWS. Um, as you can see, there's no Lambda functions uh, so far. And I would like to start off by going to my Terraform initial code. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see? The Visual Studio? Yeah, maybe you can make it just a little bigger. That would be good. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Let me move the window. Maybe I can, yeah, maybe I can make my. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to put the code in my uh, repository later. Uh, there are some files. Uh, most of the files are going to be there except for variables like, you know, the tokens, authentication. So I will just tell you where they are, but Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope that I will not show it. And if I if I do, then Andy will have to do the uh, crypto work. <laughs> okay, but uh, forget about the Lambda code and load, ge load generation for now, because this is just a helper code that is maybe we will use to generate some traffic to Lambda. And this is Lambda code, which is actually deployed in AWS. So if you would like to, you know, deploy your own Lambda, you can do this. But in my case, I already zipped this Lambda and I put it in S3 bucket. So again, this is a standard AWS procedure. You, you just, you can uh, prepare the code, zip the uh, Lambda and put it in S3 bucket. Mm -hmm. This is one way of deploying that thing. And then um, if you want to deploy a you know, full work in Lambda, you need some resources, unfortunately, uh, but this is quite scary only at the beginning. So here uh, we see that I defined some resources some, some I stole from the internet mm -hmm. uh, and the other I, I define manually. But these are resources representing things that we need to create in AWS in order to de de deploy Lambda. We need to deploy the Lambda itself. I will uh, show it in a second. And then we need to define IAM role, uh, IAM role, so permissions to invoke this Lambda. Then we need to de define some resources related to ga gateway in order to be able to reach this Lambda from outside world. Um, then we uh, then we need some Lambda permissions for invoking uh, the API gateway. So this actually, really, these resources all are related to permissions. They are not related to permissions and API gateway. So basically, the outer part, right? So where we want to connect the Lambda with outer world. So if you if you never use AWS, you can think about it only as a you know, some resources necessary to uh, to create in order for the Lambda to be reachable by outer outer world. And if you if you know AWS, you're going to see, okay, I am raw uh, gateways and Lambda permissions. This is nothing spectacular here. And one thing I didn't tell you about, but this is going to be an output. So as you have data sources, which can be um, used, you know, to refer in resources, for example, also, you can store an output of your code. And in this case, we're going to store an output and show it in the terminal. And this is going to be the URL for invoking my Lambda. So this is going to be from this API gateway. So from the you know gateway to the outer world with this name, this is going to be the URL we need to reach in order to get to Lambda. So as you will see in a second, uh, this will be uh, printed in our terminal. But what is most important here, uh, I created the Lambda, which already has some uh, some features defined. So first of all, I'm, I define a lot of variables in my code. These are variables which don't have any default values. So for example, Dynatrace token, Dynatrace environment URL, my AWS access account key and secret, this is not the best practice. So again, putting um, access key and secret in variable is a possibility and it can be done for development purposes in your local environment. But in, in case of AWS, it's better to use environment variables or secret storage, these kind of things. 
but it's acceptable for the demo purposes. Okay, mm -hmm. so just be be careful with using variables when you when you are using things as token, mm -hmm. access key, secrets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But anyway, this is just a variable. It's not defined here. It doesn't have you know the value here. It doesn't have any de default value. It just it's just defined, so I can use it later in the code. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I have Dynatrace cluster ID, connection of token, connection of base URL and ten tenant. These are necessary to provide well, in environment variables when you create a Lambda layer uh, to track the Lambda in Dyna Dynatrace, as well as the Lambda layer ARN. So the layer, the ID of the layer that we want to attach to Lambda. So when you want to track Lambda in Dynatrace, you should create this Lambda and everything that you need and add and deploy add, uh, a layer on top of that Lambda. And depending on which uh, region in AWS you are, which uh, environment, which kind of Lambda interpreter or Python or JS uh, you are using, it will have different values. In my case, I will be staying in the same region. All of my Lambdas will be on Python. So I define this variable, but it has default value. So by default, it will have this value. If I want to overwrite, I will be able to do it, but I don't have to. And just for clarification, I know this is uh, this is for your sample app that you deploy for your Lambda function. If somebody else is deploying, obviously, other apps, it doesn't matter. In your case, you decided to use Lambda, and you also here, obviously, use Terraform to deploy that Lambda, including Dynatrace support, meaning being able to trace transactions through Lambda. And folks, if you are interested in more on Lambda, uh, how this works with Dynatrace, there's also great documentation. It's a, it goes beyond the scope of what we're doing here today on the Terraform, but I think it's a great example. And it also shows the power of why choosing Terraform, because in this case, you're using Terraform to deploy Lambda, but you're also going to use Terraform, the same tool, to then configure Dynatrace. I think that's Yeah, cool. I, I did it on purpose, right? Just yeah. to show you that, uh, you know, even if you know something already, you know, you know, uh, deployment of, for example, of Lambda. And I remember I was watching one of your clinics uh, from some years ago, and the, mm -hmm. the, then you deployed Lambda with a layer. Mm -hmm. So this is another way to do it, right? You mm -hmm. just define the Lambda, you define the layer, mm -hmm. preferably as a variable because it can change. So later, later on, you don't have to go and find it somewhere. Mm -hmm. You just use the variable. And if you take a look at the Lambda code, then I'm using the variable of environment code name. So first environment in my case will be called whiskey and mm -hmm. another one I create is going to be called tango. Mm -hmm. So in my, uh, all my values for uh, variables, I keep in TFVars file and, you know, locally I keep their tokens and all of this stuff. So obviously I cannot show it to you, yeah, but that's okay. this is another standard. Uh, so if you are defining variables locally, you can use TFVars or you can provide those variables as you run plan, or you can also use them from environment variables. So there are many ways, but in our case, it's just important that in my case, this env code name will be substituted for, will be substituted Perfect. for whis whiskey. Mm -hmm. And also the layer, as you can see, uh, I defined one of only one layers in this array and it's gonna be the uh, layer for Dynatrace um, mm -hmm. tracking. And also I have some uh, variables that are necessary to define when you deploy Lambda. And since uh, this, this and this, uh, I'm gonna, you know, I don't want to even parameterize it. Always I want to have open telemetry uh, mm -hmm. set to true and this is probably never going to change or mm. not very often. So I left it without parameterizing, but things as Dynatrace trace cluster ID, connection based URL, off token, tenant, they will be dependent on the environment I'm deploying to. So they will have to be parameterized. So in environment, whiskey is going to be different. It's going to have different values. And in another environment, Tango is going to have different values. And then I just defined different values in tfvars mm -hmm. for this and that environment so you will see that they have different files here tfvars mm -hmm. here and there and they they contain different code name mm -hmm. um cluster id connection of token base url etc etc but they have the same yeah. uh, lambda layer because it has default value i do not override it sounds good so yeah so now the first thing when you do uh, when you are in uh, in in this repo in this code so I need to initialize the Terraform, so download everything that is required. So in my case, I will require two things. 
two providers, Dynatrace in the latest version 116.0 uh, and AWS in version at least four. It's gonna take the latest, but not less than four, okay? And for the Dynatrace provider, I need to provide the Dynatrace temp URL. And this is also uh, from variables or rather these TFRs and token, same here. And similar configuration for AWS. Since I always uh, want to use EU Central One, I'm not gonna parameterize this one. I might, but I don't want. Mm -hmm. And secret and uh, access key uh, also from variables. Again, not the best practice, but acceptable for demo and for local development, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let's take a look when I'm here. I'm in the main, uh, in the root folder. So let me go to env whiskey. And now if I try to run Terraform plan, so, to see what should be created, it will say, okay, I don't have, you know, the log file, blah, blah, you need to run Terraform in it. The Terraform is not initialized here. So first thing we do is to run Terraform in it. And it will download the providers. It will create the necessary file. You will see that it creates the dot Terraform uh, directory. It creates the Terraform log file. And so far we just initialized. So we just downloaded the necessary file and created the necessary log files. And now if I run Terraform plan, it will tell me, okay, uh, here's the changes that need to be, oh, you see, I even have some problem in my code. So I will have to fix it because I changed the name. Yeah, this one, and it should be demo in a trace lambda. So let me quickly check that, change that. You see demo effect. That's good because it shows That's very good. that uh, yeah, yeah. we're doing also troubleshooting on the fly because who knows, maybe yeah. somebody else is running into the same things. So previously when I had this uh, Lambda function, it was called my Lambda. I changed it to demo dynatrace Lambda. That's why I need to change mm -hmm. the reference, right? As easy as it gets. So again, now we should not have any problems, hopefully. So it will tell us, okay, here's, here's what you need to add. You need to add, you know, this bunch of code, but we don't need to, you know, dig into that. The important thing is that we have 10 things to create. Why 10 things? Because we asked for 10 resources. Lambda, IAM role, gateway, gateway method, um, deployment, permissions, etc. Right? So now when I run Terraform apply, and I put yes, it will be creating the uh, deployment of Lambda. And also it will be created, as, as we said, with the layer that um, has, uh, you know, it, that Dynatrace requires. And also it will put the necessary environment variables in the configuration. So right away after the deployment, the Lambda should be, um, you know, should be ready to uh, use. And when we use it, it should be tracked by Dynatrace. So we're gonna see it. It can take some time, but finally it, it took, uh, it, it deployed. So now we can copy this, um, invoke URL. So this is the URL that you need to use to um, get to Lambda. And let's open it in browser. Okay, so we have we have our Lambda responding. This Lambda is responding in some random time, sometimes, you know, sometimes milliseconds, sometimes more than second, but I just sent some requests. So if we go here, and we go to services, we're gonna see this this one here, but of course I deployed it before, so maybe it's not yet you know picking up the traffic. So let's give it a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, since this one is here, maybe right away we would like to create this you know an SLO, not to you know not to waste time. So let's create an SLO for this one. So we're gonna go for to service level objective, and if you know how to create uh, SLOs right away in Terraform, you know, you can go to the code and create it or maybe use the, the documentation. I I don't always remember. And what I do normally is I create, first I create some test SLO, like the one that I will delete later. I export it using the export function. I think this export function will be um, shown in details in a, one of the upcoming clinics mm -hmm. by by uh, great guys from, from Terraform, Dynatrace Terraform. But just for you to grasp an idea, I normally create some resource I don't know manually on my test environment. I export it, modify it, 
apply, see that it works okay, and then I delete the manually created one. So let's let's go ahead and let's do that. So let's create a new SLO. It's gonna be service level availability. I'm gonna call it test uh, Lambda SLO. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, I'm gonna leave this uh, untouched, but I will just define a filter. So yeah, so I'm lazy, of course. So I will do preview. Okay, so I'm gonna have this demo DT funk whiskey. This is the one I'm interested in. So I'm gonna go entity name and let's just put, um, yeah, demo DT funk whiskey. Okay, we have it. And success criteria, criteria let's, let's put it 99, 99,5. Uh, and let's disable error budget for now. Yeah, so let's evaluate this one. Okay, we see already something, right? We see that there is a, a metric selector with value 100. That means that the Lambda already got some traffic. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we define that. So let's create this. Test Lambda SLO. I normally call it test or with my name, just, you know, to be, sure that this is the one that's gonna be deleted in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if we take a look at this one, we see that the, you know there are some numbers already, but now we can go to our code and what we can do is use the export function of Terraform provider. So again, this is gonna be described in, a, in another session, but you can just use the Terraform providers registry Terraform. So the package that is inside the, the files downloaded by Terraform init, then Dynatrace, uh, Darwin, Terraform provider, Dynatrace. You know, you are going deep to the, mm -hmm. uh, to the binary with the provider and you are putting dash export. Mm -hmm. And then you can put the name of the resource that you want to export. So if you don't know the name of the resource, you can, for example, see here in the docs, you can put SLO. Okay, so the name of the resource is Dynatrace SLO. Okay. So let's try to export Dynatrace SLO. This way, it will go ahead and uh, export all the resources of this type. In my, in my case, it's gonna be only one. So hopefully if it works, it's gonna uh, export only one, um, only one uh, resource. It's gonna be stored by default in a folder called configuration. So here, you see that the exported created for uh, folder configuration and inside the SLO we have SLO test lambda. Hmm. So this is the file that I should, you know, steal, copy, and I will copy it to my env, env uh, directory and I will re rename it not to have this, you know, thing. And in my case, when I don't have too many resources, so I have, for example, five, ten SLOs, I keep just the file SLOs and I put all my SLOs there, you know? So here we take a look at the test Lambda SLO. Of course, we don't want to have the word test. Lambda availability SLO, that's gonna be my, you know, name. Then the name that is gonna be dis displayed on UI. Demo Lambda availability SLO. You can see that the evaluation is aggregate and the filter is what we put there, type service and TT9. So here I will leave the whiskey. It's gonna fail later, but that's on purpose. Um, and this is the metric expression and target and time frame. So let's let's see what happens when I run Terraform plan. You don't always have to run Terraform plan, but it's a good practice. So first run plan and then apply. And you can see that, okay, there's one thing to add and this is the Dynatrace SLO to add. Okay, great. So now Terraform apply. It's gonna ask us if we want to create this, yes. And there should be this resource created. So sometimes it might take a moment, but you can see that this is the uh, Lambda availability SLO that we created, looks good. So now I can delete the manually created one. Just make sure that it's 
this one. Mm -hmm. Even if you made mistake, you know, if you if you deleted accidentally this one, you already have it in the code. So if you want, you can recreate. Okay. Um, so let's go to uh, service level objectives. Perfect. One thing that bothers me is like maybe I want to. I don't want to take a look at one week. Maybe I'm interested only in one hour. Okay, so of course in, in UI, you, you would go to editing, change it. Same thing here, instead of having minus uh, one week, I'm gonna have it minus one hour. I'm gonna run Terraform plan. You will see that instead of adding, it's gonna report a change. There's a change in time frame, And now just Terraform apply. And it should change. And I think this really shows the power of everything as code because your code is now the source of truth. And you can, as you said, maybe you, somebody accidentally configures something, deletes something. You can always then run Terraform and it should probably run it as part of your delivery pipeline and then just apply exactly the Dynagis configuration that you want that you've specified in your source code. And this is the power of this here. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So now we can just take a look at this and we see what, you know, what's, what's there. And moreover, if you take a look at Terraform TF state, mm -hmm. this is the place where the state is kept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even in the worst case scenario, even if you lost your files, you will be able to recover from the state file. Yeah, because this is, is also, I guess, how Terraform knows what the difference is because the current, yeah, okay. You can think about it as a very big checksum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, what I, Edwin, I really like, thanks for that, that you also walked us through the path because this is the questions that we have received in the last session we did with the with the guild. Um, so what's kind of the process? You start with configuring something in Dynatrace through the UI if you don't really know how to craft all of this. Then you can use the export feature, which is a new feature of the Terraform provider that we will cover in a in a future uh, observability clinic. Then you modify it based on your needs. Like in your case, you changed the name, you made sure, and I'm sure that they will, you can do more things. You can use variables and everything. Um, and then you run it. And this is, it's really nice. So manually creating it, exporting it, applying the changes, and then run it. Maybe there's a better way, but so far that's the best way that's we were able to, um, to navigate because um, sometimes you are creating very complex things in mm -hmm. Dynatrace. So some, sometimes you just, you know, we are human beings. We, we want to see things that we, as we create, that's why UI is usable. But yeah. then when we need to move them or scale or parameterize, it's easier to do it in code. So start with the UI, um, move to code, propagate. That would be my mm, mm -hmm. motto, my quote for today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can write it down. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see what, uh, what happened here. So here we see that the so one hour. time frame has changed uh, okay so now if we if we strike this uh, lambda a few times more you will see some uh, some additional data points here but now let's go ahead and uh, create a very simple dashboard so let's create a dashboard let's call it test slos or slos again it's not going to be advanced it's going to be something silly just to show you the idea and let's put the header, like some simple header. We're gonna have my SLOs here. And we're gonna put a service service level objective here. And it's gonna be this one. Okay. Maybe let's make it a bit bigger. Okay. We have it here, we're done. Okay, so we have the the dashboard created. And now I can just copy the ID of this dashboard, go back to my um, to my code. I will, oh, sorry, I moved my terminal here. Uh, okay, so uh, we're gonna do the Terraform export, but this one, this time they not trace dashboard. I think that's the name of uh, of the resource and I will put equal sign and ID. And this is how you can export a single resource. In order you to export only the dashboard, you will put the equal sign 
and the ID. And now you can see that in configuration in dashboard, you will see this, you will see this one. So again, I will move it to my environment and I will start modifying a bit. Let's close this one. Yeah, so this is gonna be SLO dashboard. Uh, the name will be a bit better, SLO dashboard or main dashboard. Um, it's gonna be um, a shirt. It's not gonna be a preset, shirt is gonna be true. So I will share this one. I will not move uh, the um, header. I will not change it. But here you can see that there is uh, the ID of SLO, right? So as we said, it's not the best practice to use the hard-coded values. So what do you think, Andy? What should we do? What should we put here? Well, somehow it would be great to reference the SLO by its name, maybe? I'm not sure if that's possible, or some variable. Um, to be or maybe to... even ID, right? Or an ID, yeah, yeah, that would be even better. So we can go to SLO, we can go ahead and do this. Dynatrix SLO dot, ah. we will take the name of the SLO, Lambda Availability SLO, mm -hmm. and dot ID. So that means this is standard functionality of Terraform that I can reference other configuration objects. Yes, if they have exposed uh, mm -hmm properties such as ID. Mm -hmm. And how can we check that? Again, we will go to our documentation and we will see that uh, read only yeah. property of this resource is ID, cool. right? That's so what that, we need. That's basically what the Dynatrix Terraform provider does. The Dynatrix Terraform provider pulls all this information and gives it to Terraform. And that's, that's great, yeah. Yes, that's and then Terraform lets you use its syntax and built in, mm -hmm. um, you know, the properties to easily create things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's some title that we will leave. We can of course parameterize it, but we don't want. Mm -hmm. And there is dashboard sharing. You can see that dashboard sharing again is re referencing th this dashboard. Mm -hmm. So since we changed the name, we're gonna change okay. the name here as well. And mm -hmm. here we can also put this mm -hmm. name. We're gonna remove the comments mm -hmm. enabled true. So this way, everyone should be able to view this dashboard. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and again, what do we do? What do you think we do? I would do a plan probably because I learned from you that planning is always good. Yeah. See. Have... Planning is always good. That's a, that's gonna be cost of the day. Mm -hmm. We see that we have to create two resources, a dashboard and a sharing. The so now mm -hmm. let's run apply. Yes, we want to create it. Mm -hmm. And let's go back to our uh, Dynatrix and let's see if it's already created. It can take a moment, moment, moment. Yeah, SLO mm -hmm. main dashboard. So let's open it, verify that this is what we want to have. Exactly. This is what we want to have. So I will go ahead and delete the manually created resource. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome, right? We yeah. configured some stuff. So now if we accidentally delete something or uh, there's going to be a disaster, we already have something to, mm -hmm. uh, to rely on. Do you have any questions on this so far? Um, no, I got to say this is really, I mean, it's, it's extremely powerful. And especially as you think about it, you start small, but then you, you built on top of it. And now you have your folder with all of your Dynatrace configuration next to your whatever else you use. Terraform for maybe in like in your case you're using it to deploy your Lambda functions. Some people may use it to deploy the Kubernetes clusters or the VMs or whatever it is. So I think uh, this for me uh, is is great because we had a slide earlier where we said what's the difference when would you choose Terraform versus Monaco, and I think it comes back to if you already have Terraform in your organization and you do infrastructure as code or, or configuration as code for more than just one thing, then a tool like Terraform uh, is, is a great choice. And it's great to know that we now also have a Dynatrix Terraform provider. Um, what I would be interested in now is, so you've shown the process of creating something manual, extracting it or exporting it, then modifying it to your needs. Um, 
what about when you move to a different environment? Because I think the tango environment, that's we like we all like whiskey, that's but great we, also, we also like to we like tango. tango. Yeah. And then Foxtrot. Uh, yeah, so it t totally wasn't planned. It was just spontaneous question from Andy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's see how we can move that to another environment. So as I said, in my in another directory, and Tango, I already have prepared the tfvars uh, file with, with different values of the variables. So tokens for uh, Dynatrix. Of course, if you want to use Dynatrix provider, you need a token, right? With mm -hmm. proper configuration. You're gonna find it in the in the documentation. Again, you need uh, some uh, tenant IDs. Um, you know all the all the things uh, required for Lambda. But assuming you you got that uh, and you define that, um, you're good to go on another environment. So what what we normally do is we just go to to this other uh, fo folder Tango in this case. Mm -hmm. And let, let's take a look at this. What we need really to create a Terraform uh, or run Terraform in the other environment. Of course, we need this IWS Lambda, DT dashboards, DT SLOs. We need provider with providers and we need variables. So what we do is we are linking them in between environments. So we are, we're gonna do symbolic link between uh, this and Tango and whiskey first provider then AWS Lambda, then variables, then uh, Dynatrace SLOs, and Dynatrace dashboard. Why linking? Because if we want to change one thing, in our case, in, in Kitopi, we have something called common, and then we are linking common to all, all the environments. Mm -hmm. But in this case, let's say whiskey is the source of truth, and then if we want to change everything in, in one place, we just modify in, in whiskey, apply on whiskey, check it's proper, and then you know apply on other environments. So this is a quick way on how you can use the same files without duplication on different environments. I guess, and I now, guess other ways would be, I'm just thinking out loud here, if you think about you keep everything in Git, maybe you have a common Git repository with common configurations, and then you have let's say environment specific Git folders, and then as part of your build pipeline, you just basically put them together, right? And then, or something you, like you, that. Yeah. You can do that, but I think keeping in one repository with linking is, is, good, is yeah. as easy. And yeah. since the pipelines you can have for different environments within one Git repository or GitLab, you know, pipeline mm -hmm. or GitHub Actions, I think it's 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 yeah. easy and, you know, not, not very dangerous, I guess. Yeah. So now, again, we are in different folder, so we need to run Terraform in it at first. Mm -hmm. And take a look, meanwhile, take a look at this. We have one AWS function here, mm -hmm. and also have I have my other environment. So this one, I'm gonna go to services, and I don't have I don't have anything here. Mm -hmm. So now if we run Terraform plan and apply, let's take a look, Terraform plan will tell us, okay, you need to create 14 or 13 resources because we're gonna create AWS Lambda, then we're gonna create SLO, mm -hmm. dashboard sharing and dashboard, right? 13 resources. Yep. So now go ahead, Terraform apply. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. I know. The thing is the thing, <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I didn't invite uh, invent it. So yeah, no, I know, but it's it just really shows the power. And I remember when you showed this last week at the guild, uh, uh, people were asking, "Well, isn't this very? Isn't this a lot of effort to get there?" And you 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 made a very nice statement. It always takes effort in the beginning to get started with something like this, but this is the only way that allows you to scale that allows you to be failure and foolproof, um, that allows you to have automated version control. I mean, it's 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 all, all the benefits are in the end outweighing the cost and the effort, but yes, in the beginning, it takes some effort to actually to codify everything, yeah? Of course. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It pays later when you need later. to, you know, clean some dirty yep. stuff. So as you can see, uh, our uh, Terraform uh, apply gave us another URL. So this is the URL to use to trigger the other Lambda, right? This, mm -hmm. the Lambda that we called 
Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Tango. So this is the Tango Lambda. Mm -hmm. You can see it's already responding and you can mm -hmm. see that it has already been created in uh, AWS. So if we take a look at, at, Lambda, uh, at Tango Lambda, we will see that it has the layer, it has some configuration uh, um, uh, properties, so environment variables. And now if everything works, in a moment we should see the traces here in a second. Mm -hmm. So since we have time, let's see if it, if it created um, a proper service level objective. So right now the service level objective doesn't have any, uh, any traffic yet, and it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have uh, data, but it will not have data because here is a mistake, as you can see. So this is another mm -hmm. environment. So instead of whiskey, mm -hmm. we should use Tango, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so this is not perfect, right? We need to change something. Ha, huh. how do we do it? So it's easy. We just go to our SLOs and instead of using a hard coded mm -hmm. uh, value here, we will just use a variable. So dollar, uh, dollar sign var dot nth code name. Oh, that's why you, now I understand why you use this. And I guess you could also use this in other areas as well. You could Wherever you have it. a string. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a variable you can think about like, you know, a variable in programming. Yep. So now if I run Terraform plan, you will see that there is a change that has to be made. Mm -hmm. One change because we changed this mm -hmm. from whiskey to tango. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and apply this change. And if you think about it, we change it in the nth whiskey file, right? Mm -hmm. But it automatically, of course, because of the linking, yeah, yeah. it already is here, right? Mm -hmm. So we are working on the same, on the same file, basically. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes, we want to change that. It's going to be a quick one. So now let's check this one here. Uh, oh man, it. it changed, it propagated. Yes. Yep. So what do you think about the dashboard? It's going to... Let's, let's see if the dashboard works. I'm not really sure about that. I think, uh, yeah, I, it, should, it should show here, but I think I might have mm, one mistake that I put the same email I'm using, um, I'm using uh, on the other environment. So mm -hmm. if, if, if in case, but look at this, we will use, we will use some other feature. So now we will go ahead and take a look at the, uh, at the apply we run. And we will take a look at the dashboard creation. So this is the dashboard and you can see that when it was running, it also showed us the ID. Mm -hmm, cool. Okay. So now we can hack the system. We can open any dashboard and replace the ID here. Awesome. And voila, it's here, right? Yeah. So probably I need to parameterize in order for it to be uh, yeah, because proper, you, I need to parameterize. Yeah, it. because it's it's basically the, uh, you have two Dynatrace environment and you've registered them with two different Emails, emails and yes, therefore exactly. that, that user officially doesn't have it doesn't exist and doesn't have access to it yeah cool yeah hey, but if um, we want for example make it a huh? just the last thing if we want to make it a preset we can make it preset through terraform plan True. terraform show. apply yes and after it run and i will go to my dashboards I will see my SLO, my main dashboard, and everything is here in place. Awesome. Yeah, That's that awesome. would be it for the demo. And I, yeah, have, I hope you like it. You like I, it? I love it. And I have an, I, I have an, even have an additional idea for your demo. So mm -hmm. your Lambda function, you get the base URL from Terraform. Mm -hmm. I think you should then also think about creating a synthetic test that is basically running the URL check against that Lambda. So you don't have to create your traffic manually, but you Dynatrace automatically does a synthetic check. Yeah. You want to do it now? It's up to you how uh, how bold you are. If you can do All it right. in three minutes. Let's try. So we're going to go to... Synthetic? Yeah, I'm always lost in this. Synthetic, let's take... A... Yeah, let's take this. I think this one, but we will change, check it. Yeah, we're gonna create an HTTP monitor. It's gonna be lambda ping. Mm -hmm. 
at HTTP request. This is going to be the, hopefully, this is this one. Let me just double check. So the first one we liked was Whiskey. Mm -hmm. This is the API gateway. Yeah, this is the HPQ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Get. Perfect. That's it. Next. Next. Um, yeah, at HTTP request. We're good here. That's it. Uh, I think that's File if status quo. Yeah, next. Just a, a simple test. Yeah. Yeah, everyone needed. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the closest? I'm sure you have something in Poland. Yeah, for sure. Country? Do we have Poland? Yeah, we have. Okay. So it's going to be this one. Yes, it's going to cost me a lot if I keep running that. Okay, so this this is the um, lambda pink. Mm -hmm. So now uh, I think we should can we on demand make an on demand execution triggered. Yeah. By the way, it's also a cool new feature: the on demand execution. You can trigger it here. You don't have to wait for the schedule to kick in. Uh, you can create it here, and you can also uh, create uh, execute it via the API. Typically, what I suggest, if you're baking this into your delivery pipeline, like you said, you're deploying a Lambda, you're creating your SLOs, your dashboards, your, synth your synthetic, and then as part of your pipeline, whoever, whatever pipeline executes Terraform could then execute uh, the API call to also trigger the synthetic test at this particular moment, and then you can use mm -hmm. this to report back to the pipeline. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's that's a good thing, actually. That's yeah. a good thing. I never thought yeah. about it. Yeah, because then you don't need to let the the synthetic test run every minute. You can you let's say let you run it every fifteen minutes because that's a good practice. But as mm -hmm. as the time of the deployment, you then say now I want to execute it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, do you think? I think you can already export it. It's just the first execution may take a little bit because we need ah, to okay. up, upload the the uh, the test. Okay, so uh, let's try to find synthetic uh, HTTP and then trace HTTP monitor. So we have the monitors API. So again, let's go. Let's go mm -hmm. to our main and whiskey. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do Terraform export, but this one we're gonna go for. It's called Dino Transition Dino Monitor. Monitor. Yeah. Hopefully it works. Yeah, it works. Looks like. GDP Monitor, this one. Mm -hmm. Again, we're gonna move it to the main folder, rename it. HTTP monitors, or maybe even better DT because that's the prefix I chose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let now let's let's see what we need to the the uh, URL here. Yeah. Yes. This URL we should take from Lambda, right? Exactly. So that that what was the same thing that was taken in output because the output uh -huh. is put to state and to terminal. So if you yeah. want to use this in another Terraform repository, you can reference the state and the uh, output. Okay. Yeah. Other way you cannot connect uh, states in between each other, but if we are in the same repo, we just reference the mm -hmm. normally to the resource name and uh, property. So here, sorry, HTTP monitors here. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna put in the description demo lambda pink mm -hmm. uh, global outage HTTP statuses. We leave it as it is, and of course, geolocations should not change the IDs. Yeah, it's the same. Maybe, yeah. maybe there is a data source for that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's. I think it's just. Add. It's just a. Yeah, maybe that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Maybe that's a good idea for me. It's actually synthetic location. That's what it is. Ah, synthetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's even this. So awesome. probably we can use that, but let's not waste yeah. time on this yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the monitor. So now let's take a look at the Terraform plan. And of course, it's going to show you more than one change because we already changed. Uh, you know, the change the. Mm. Preset, so we need to run all of them. So it's going to be Terraform apply. And then, if you do the same thing in the other environment, then exactly, this is, yeah, this is awesome. So now we need to go to the other directory, link the file because the file is not there, and just yeah. run plan and apply, right? 
This is really cool. Let's wait, awesome, let's, wait, let's wait a second. Let's go to Tango. Tango. Let's link the file. Uh, HTTP monitor, sorry. <clears throat> and again, Terraform plan should show us, I think, only one change because we ran all the mm -hmm. changes previously. I mm -hmm. know, oh, maybe the, again, the same. And Terraform apply. Well, yes, we want to run this. So now after running this, we should be able to see the, the newly created monitor um, in our second environment. Here we have uh, the pink, the cool. same thing, right? This is really cool. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's what we can do. So you can see that if you are, let's say, moderately um experience with using this you can do it really quick and configure the whole environment quite uh, quite quite fast right and it's amazing um thanks for being up for the challenge that just threw over at you <laughs> did it, did it. it's really cool andy uh, i feel so safe if you we can take all the challenges no problem <laughs> <laughs> Should we go back to the presentation? And yeah, let's bring it home. We have like two, three more slides. Yeah. So, uh, guys, Dynatrace provider, Terraform provider is, uh, let's say, an open source community or open source project. So there are great guys behind this. Uh, uh, Reinhardt and Kodai, two guys from Dynatrace that are working on this. Uh, they've been incredibly helpful for me. They fixed bugs. They helped me with some things. And right now they teach me how to... Uh, introduce some small changes to the repo, but the repo is, you know, open for your contribution. You will have some, you will have to have some introduction, introduction to that. So this is not like, you know, zero knowledge necessary, but there are is open issues and ideas for uh, improving the framework. So if you, uh, if you have a question regarding the, uh, the Dynatrace telephone provider, you can contact support and those uh, will be forwarded to the GitHub as issues. But if you know how to code, or if you want to learn how to code in Go with Terraform providers, uh, how to write them, and really participate in something interesting, you can join the repo and contribute here. The link will be uh, in the in the YouTube and Dynatrace um, University, right? That's the name. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and you can make your own changes. Uh, and there is also a, a roadmap and a change um, change log. So you can take a look at then what's, you know, what's ahead, what's already been implemented. And I know guys have already released version 0.16. Mm -hmm. They are quite fast with the changes right now. They are blazing fast. So uh, be sure to update your uh, version from time to time if you have it uh, hard coded. And yeah, I think in upcoming sessions, you will meet uh, Reinhardt and Kodai. Uh, exactly. They will show you the export feature. And I think that's all on my side. Uh, there was no big uh, disasters during the demo, so I'm happy. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Adrian, thank you so much for doing this. I know at the time of the recording, it's between Christmas and New Year's. So you took, uh, you took time out of your free time, actually, because you said you were up for the challenge. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for doing this. Not only for being up for the challenge and showing us a cool capability, but really uh, also giving us some best practices. I really like everything you showed today. Right? It was it was truly amazing, and I'm happy. I, I'm just uh, I really hope that you know we will soon. Well, first of all, I want to have you back because there's more stuff that um, I think you can teach the community. Um, but now I want to wish you and everybody else out there uh, a great start into 2023. It's possible that you watch this and it is already 2023. Then hopefully so far, everything is good and it will be even better. Uh, as the yeah, same, same from me. I wish us all that it's going to be more peaceful, exactly. quiet. Let us just work and concentrate on the good stuff. Exactly. With this, thank you so much. Thank you bye very bye. much, Andy. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.